بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد We've discussed the different details related to the character of Mahdi and we've spoken a bit about some of the other leaders of the time and how there will be a lot of corruption in the different parts of the land and people will want some way out of this and they will be looking for some kind of way out and then we mentioned that in a place called uh, Circassium which is in Syria today by the borders of Turkey and Iraq, uh, and, uh, Iraq it's there will be a fight, a war between the Turks and the Romans in which the Romans will apparently win. Then this Sufiani person that we spoke about who will come out of Sham, will come out of Syria from Damascus, he will cause a lot of corruption, a lot of problems, cause a lot of chaos in the world. So much so that whoever he catches that are his enemies the women folk, he will cut open, he will have the, the, the army will cut open their stomachs and they will kill the embryos and they'll kill children as well. So they, they'll be very violent. They'll basically remind people of what the crusaders used to do before. So from Sham, from Damascus, much of the, he, he'll have something very much against the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa meaning the Banu Hashim, the Quraysh. That's why today a lot of the Iranians, they've, they've made a lot of uh, documentaries and films and things about this man called Sufiani. And what they like to do is they like to say Sufiani, because you remember he is from the family of Abu Sufyan radiallahu an. So what they do is, because he's from the family of Abu Sufyan but from a different son, not the one from whom Muawiyah not, not from Muawiyah radiallahu an, but they, what they do is they put him and Muawiyah, Yazid, all of them together and say, look, those people also went against the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and their progeny is also doing the same thing. So clearly, Yazid is definitely with with Yazid it was the same issue, but you can't say that for Muawiyah radiallahu an. There was a legitimate reason that they had for whatever they did, but Yazid was obviously uh, not on the right track. So anyway, they've, they've made documentaries about him. They've had actors playing his role and ajib stuff that they've done, the Iranians uh, or somebody, some, some of these Persians, about this. So he will be very violent. And a, a number of the men of Quraysh, Quraysh Qureshi people, they will, run, they, they will escape to Constantinople, which is Istanbul today. They'll escape because they, they, if they're caught by him, he will, he will kill them. He will then send somebody to the leader of the Romans that he should send those people back. And he will. They will be sent back. So they will all be killed at the door of Damascus. At the entry of Damascus, all of these people who had run away, who had been sent back, they will all be killed. Then another group will stand up to try to fight against him but a lot of them will be killed and they will run and they will be defeated until they go and they enter into the lands of Khurasan because there's a sanctuary there in Khurasan there are people who will be fighting against him then the cavalry the horsemen of Sufyani they will be going after this other group towards Khurasan Night and day they'll be after them. And they will be so destructive that anything that comes in their way, they will destroy it. So they'll just be pillaging and ravaging every area that comes in between on their way to Khurasan. After these people who had run towards Khurasan. They will break down forts and they will just make places, just burn fields. and Until they'll enter on their way to a place called Zawra which is outside Baghdad. Well, Zawra is Baghdad. They'll enter into Baghdad. And in Baghdad, they will kill a hundred thousand people in Baghdad. So this is Sufyani's army. He, he's, he, he absolutely goes crazy. 
and he will kill about a hundred thousand people in Baghdad. Then they'll go towards Kufa, and there they will kill sixty thousand people, and they will make all the women and the children into prisoners, and then they will send out different armies around to the different areas. So much so that the general eastern part of even Khorasan, they will reach to that area. And they will be looking for the people of Khorasan. Now as I mentioned, Khorasan is basically Afghanistan, northwest Pakistan, and parts of Iran. That's Khorasan. That's the old traditional Khorasan. Then they will send an army to Medina Munawwara to go and find anybody there that is of the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, this is all prophesied, uh, this is all foretold from before. Now, you can see how the uh, Shiites, they, th this is a big deal for them. So, they, well it's a big deal for us as well, I mean, yeah, because he will send an army to Medina Munawwara with the sole intent to take, capture anybody from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So, a number of Banu Hashim, people of that family will be killed, men and women. But a group of them will be brought to Kufa. A group of them will be brought back to Kufa. And whoever could escape, they will escape into the surrounding forests or jungles or into the deserts. That's when the Mahdi and the Mansur will run towards Mecca. Well, a group of them, specifically seven people of a very high caliber, will, will go and escape from Medina to Makkah, Makkah Mukarramah. The problem is that the Makkah and Medina, the leaders, will, not be, will be corrupt. They won't be on the good side of things. So, they will hide in Makkah. The governor of Medina, the leader of Medina, whoever it may be, he will send a message, a decree to the leader of Makkah, that when these so-and-so people come to you, when they come to Makkah, and he will have their names written down, then make sure you kill them. Put them to death. The, 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 the leader of Makkah found that to be too much. He felt that that would be too much for him to do. So these seven people will consult among themselves and they will, may have heard that he's not that bad, the leader. So they'll come to him at night asking for refuge. He'll say, okay, go and leave with peace. Go and leave when you have to with peace. And they leave. Then he will send two men. No, he will send two of the, uh, behind two of them. He will send a man, and one of them will be killed. The other one will be still looking. Now, at that time, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will get very angry, and the people, the the inhabitants of the heavens, will also get very angry. Meaning the angels. The other ones, the other one that wasn't killed out of the two because they were all escaped kind of separately so the two, these two were together one of them will be killed the other one will go and find his companions and he'll tell them what had happened so they know they can't trust anybody so they will go until they get to the mountains of Ta'if that's where they will hide they will hide in the mountains of Ta'if which is south of Medina Munawwara they will stay there and they will send out messages to people that this is where you have to come this is where we have to gather together this is where we have to consolidate our forces so a number of people will go and join with them when this happens the people of Makkah will fight against them meaning they will find out that these people are gathering in Ta'if so the people of Makkah will send a group of people an army to go and fight with them but this army will be de defeated by this group of people. And thus, these people will now enter into Makkah. They'll enter into Makkah and they will be fighting. It's related that, see, because right now what has happened with Mahdi is that he's gone and hidden in the mountains of Ta'if. So that's one of the hidings. It's related from Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu an that for the for this Mahdi he's going to hide twice it's related from him that he's going to hide twice one is going to be a long 
hiding so much so that people might say that oh he's passed away and nobody's going to know about it except the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so which are these two hidings that we're speaking about so one is that he will hide in ta'if right in the beginning nobody will know and then eventually they will tell people this is where we this is where we are and then they will overcome the people of Makkah then after that he will have to hide again in the mountains of Makkah and nobody will know where he is this is the two hidings that have been spoken about the reason why I'm bringing this up is because this is what the Shiites use to say that he is right now hidden he's already arrived uh, you know seven eight hundred years ago whatever it was a thousand years ago and or more and uh, he's hidden and he will come out he will appear when the day of judgment comes the, the other thing is that the Shiites believe that some of their very very special people know where he is but the thing about this is that the hadith mentions that when he hides nobody will know except maybe one person so how is it possible that the high level Shiites would know whereas the hadith says that nobody will know except maybe one person that is in charge of, that, that is helping him out in his affairs the people will make Hajj so this will be Hajj time now coming close that year's Hajj we've already described the, the details of the two eclipses during that Ramadan so you have Ramadan then you have Shawwal Dhil Qa'da Dhil Hijjah so this has all happened around that time after that moon eclipse and the solar eclipse first and the 15th of Ramadan so that year people will make Hajj and they will make Hajj without an Amir I'm not sure how that's going to be but nowadays there is officially an Amir there although you never get to see him if you go for Hajj unless you get into the Masjid normally the Amir is supposed to be the King of Arabia the King of Saudi Arabia or what they normally do is they send somebody to lead the Salat and give the Khutbah and everything in the big Masjid in, in Mina and in Muzdalifa uh, in uh, Arafah but most people that go from around the world they'll never see the Amir if you're lucky enough to go around and get into the Masjid then you'll hear the khutbah but it's so big that you know there is no consolidated effort anymore everybody from their own lands just go so I'm not sure exactly how this is going to be without an Amir maybe there'll be no Amir to lead it because there'll be problems in Makkah and Medina Munawwara maybe that's the case Wallahu alam. but basically people will all do their tawaf and everything then after the, uh, after the initial tawafs when they enter into Mina when they go to Mina and they're all settled in Mina there'll be some problems will be started now because there's problems around the world in a lot of interfighting and a lot of problems and fitna that probably is going to spark up in Mina where you've got people from all around the world it's going to spark up so many of the different tribes or people of different areas will start fighting with each other and a major fight will ensue in Mina which is really sad I mean because you can tell that it's spilled over into Mina in a sense and many of these hujjaj will be killed in this and if you remember one of the signs of that is going to be very close to before he comes if you remember it says that the jamaratul aqaba blood will flow on it so I mean if people are fighting and during the days of Mina what do you do you go and you pelt the shaitan you've got three floors now or something like that you know and people feel maybe there's going to be some fighting there so much so that the blood will run down the pillars so now you can see how that might be possible may Allah protect us so that is when this blood will flow down the pillars as mentioned earlier now if you also remember that f from a number of years some of the pious scholars awliya of Allah from different parts of the world will be constantly going to Hajj to look for the Mahdi they'll all be going on their own accord so in this year seven ulama from around the world different parts of the world they will suddenly gather together they would have all come, come for Hajj they will all suddenly gather together and it says that each of them 300 and over 310 people would have made bayah to each one of them from their own lands so maybe it will be kind of a return to the Khilafah type of thing that okay we choose you as the Amir so at least 310 to you know over 310 people 310 plus 
people will have made pledge their allegiance to each one of these seven ulama and seven scholars, uh, seven um, ulama from around the different uh, different parts of the world. They will gather together and come together in Makkah. You know, coincidentally, whatever you want to call it, they'll get together. Allah will bring them together, and then they'll be asking each other, "What's brought you here? Why have you come?" So. Each one of them, their response will be that we have come to seek out this man. We've come to look for this man who, on, on whose hands this fitna that we see around the world can become calm and can become settled. Meaning he's the one who's going to take care of these problems. And Allah will open up Constantinople for him as well. We know his name. We know him only by his name and by the name of his father and mother. So that's related that they will, it seems that they will know the name of his father and mother. The author of the book says that I have not seen any hadith which speaks about the name of his mother. Right? Um, he's looked a lot for it. But wallahu alam, it could be that his mother's name is Amina. Right? Just like his father's name is going to be Abdullah. Wallahu alam, Allah knows best. Or maybe. Some of them will know because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will just reveal it to them. Will open it up to them. What they call the kashf, the mukashafa, the unveiling. Allah knows best. But it doesn't matter anyway. So, when each of them have revealed why they're there for, they will all agree that, okay, this is a very big responsibility. We have to go and find him. Now, if anybody's going to be able to find the Mahdi and recognize him and convince him to appear, it's going to be them. Because you, you must assume, we must assume that these will be some of the most pious of the seven, uh, uh, seven very pious people and scholars from around the world. So they will start looking around in Makkah. They know he's there somewhere. It looks like they know he's there because they've seen the signs. They know. They're going to go and look. They're going to go and look for him in Makkah. And they're going to catch up with somebody. They're going to find someone. He says, you are so-and-so, son of so-and-so. And he'll say, no, I'm from the Ansaris, I'm from the Ansari families, I'm from the descendants of the Ansar. I'm not from the Quraysh. So he'll escape from them. He'll slip through, he'll slip away. So they've seen this person now, the one they, they just spoke to, they've seen him now. So they will go and consult with the more knowledgeable ones among them. Maybe some of them saw him only. So they'll say, this is how he looked and everything. They'll say, that was the man you were looking for. Why did you let him slip out? That was exactly the description of the man that you were looking for. He would have escaped to Medina Munawwara. He's going to be between those two cities at that time. So he's escaped to Medina Munawwara. So they go to Medina now. Now remember, this is happening just after Hajj. So keep in, uh, keep in your mind the dates. We're talking about Dhil Qa'dah and Dhil Hijjah. Hajj has been done, been big, big problems there. These seven ulama have got together after Hajj. So it's what, 14th of Hajj, 14th of Dhil Hijjah, 15th, you know, around that time. 14th, 15th of Dhil Hijjah maybe. What's the month after Hajj? Muharram is the month after Hajj. And there's a special day in Muharram which is the 10th of Muharram. So then they will go to Medina. They'll travel to Medina Munawwara. And they look for him there, but he will run back to Makkah. So then they'll come back to Makkah. And they look for him there, but he'll go to Medina. So it's like they're, they're chasing after him and he's going back to the other place. This will happen three times at least. Three times. The leader of Medina, if you remember, he was a corrupt one. He will hear about this now. You know, this is not going to stay a secret. That there's these ulama, they're looking for Mahdi and he's running. He's appeared, you know. So, he's heard that now people are looking for the Mahdi. He will get a, an army ready. He will prepare an army. In going and capturing, looking for all the Hashimiyin, all those people of the Hashimi, uh, gen, uh, Hashimi family. And those three, th those seven ulama, they will finally capture, catch up with the Mahdi on the third instance in Makkah. 
the third time that he's in Mecca, where? By the Rukn al-Yamani. They will finally cap- catch, catch up with him there by the Rukn al-Yamani. And they will say, and they'll, they'll say, you know, they, they'll just start, إِثْمُنَا عَلَيْكَ وَدِمَاؤُنَا فِي عُنُقِكَ إِنْ لَمْ تَمُدَّ يَدَكْ نُبَايِعُكَ our sins are on you, our blood is going to be on your shoulder if you don't extend your hand so that we can pledge allegiance to you. We can give you the bay'ah. They'll just give it to him straight. But look, you have to take up this responsibility, otherwise you're going to be sinful for this. هَذَا عَسْكَرُ السُّفْيَانِ قَدْ تَوَجَّهَ فِي طَلَبِنَا عَلَيْهِمْ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ حَزْمٍ So, they'll warn him that look, you can't run, run away now. This Sufyani, this big corrupt leader, he's got this big army ready and he's going to come after us anyway. So we have to do something about this. He will then sit. He'll become convinced. Then he will sit between the Rukn and the Maqam. Between the Rukn al-Yamani and the Maqam Ibrahim. In that area, he will sit there and he will extend his hand and then people will give him the pledge. So the pledge will be given to him there. This will happen during Salatul Isha. So this will be night time, Salatul Isha. He will have with him, suddenly he will have with him the flag of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his qamis and his sword. So these are things that he's had probably from before somebody's given him or maybe it'll be given to him, Allah knows best. But at this time when the pledge will be taken and he will reveal himself, he will have these three things as we spoke about earlier that he will, these will be the signs that he will have. Once the Isha Salat has been performed, once the Isha Salat has been performed, he'll come to the Maqam Ibrahim, he will make two rakats of Salat there, then he will, go, then he will ascend the mimbar. the pulpit will be brought, he will ascend the mimbar, and he will proclaim in a very loud voice that I remind you of Allah, O oh people. أذكركم الله وأذكركم الله أيها الناس ومقامكم بين يدي ربكم That I remind you, O oh people, of Allah and of your standing in front of Him. Eventually you're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will give a very long sermon. He will deliver a very long khutbah in which he, the main thing that he will be spoke about, uh, speaking about in that is to enliven the sunnah. He will give, be giving them targheeb, he will be inspiring them, encouraging them to enliven the sunnah, the sunnahs, the, and, and to get rid of all of the bid'at that may have come into the communities. So, the people there at the time, it says that the people, the number of the people in that, uh, at that, in that instance, when this happens, will be about 313. Just the same number as those that were in the Battle of Badr. So 350, 313 very, you could say very fortunate ones, of whom those seven ulama will be there as well. 313 people will be there. So it looks like having just 300 people there at that time, it's after Hajj, there's normally less people anyway. It, there's been a number of days obviously that they've gone to look for him in Mecca, Medina, Mecca, Medina, and so on. So that's the number of people that were there in Badr, and that's also the number of people that were with Talut when he went, when he had to cross that river, as the story that's mentioned in the Quran. They will be some of the Abdal of Sham, the Poles of Sham. These are the greatest of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there will be a group from the people of Iraq. So some of the most pious people of Iraq will be there. And also some of the noblemen, the noble people of Egypt will be there. And this will happen all of a sudden. These other people uh, did not know that this was going to happen. But they would be in the right place at the right time because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them tawfiq. Only those seven people will know what's going on. Uh, Sorry, only those seven people would have known what's going to happen because they were chasing the Mahdi to find him. But these other people will just be fortunate to be there. And these people are those who stand up at night to pray and who are like lions in the daytime. Now, the, as I told you, the leader of Medina, Munawwara, will be getting an army ready. 
So he's prepared his army And now as this happens The army of Medina as such the, the negative army of Medina They will come and fight with these people But these people will fight against them And they will overcome them They will beat this army of Medina They will defeat this army of Medina And they will enter into Medina And all of the people that they have imprisoned Remember they were capturing the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa All those that they have imprisoned They will be able to uh, To free them all Now the question that the author of this book asks For us it's quite simple See the day that he is going to reveal himself Is going to be the 10th of Muharram 10th of Muharram Count the days from after Hajj To 10th of Muharram How many days do we have? About 20 to 25 days Depending on when you start But if you start Let's just say on the 15th Of Zil Hijjah By that time Hajj is done Right definitely You know by the 13th 14th is done So 15th So you've got the 15th To the 30th of the month 15 days Then you've got a 10 days of Muharram That's 25 days minimum So it's 25 maximum 30 days So what the author is now trying to understand Is that how is it possible For these people Because it, it used to take about 5 days Between Makkah and Medina How is it possible Right So he clarifies here That they're going to go to Medina That they're going to see him first in Makkah Right Or Medina Where is he going to see him first Then they're going to go to Medina then Makkah, Medina, three times. How is that possible? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So it is even possible according to that. But obviously we can see that it's possible. You can go to Makkah, Medina, what, three times if you want? You know, because it's about a four hour drive. And if there's flight, uh, you know, there may even be, uh, there's an airport in Medina Munawwara. If there's a small airport in Makkah, uh, that can happen. And there's going to be train as well Which is probably going to be really fast So I mean it's not a big deal anymore for us But the author has found it necessary to clarify that You know the author is from over a hundred years ago So he's found it necessary to clarify So he's saying that don't you know that you, shouldn't, you shouldn't feel that this is not possible Because it takes so long to go between Makkah and Medina Right That they're going to have to go back and forth And he's, gonna, uh, he's going to reveal himself in, uh, on the 10th of Muharram So how is it possible within 20 to 25 He says it's even possible according to You know if you even count 5 days To get from one place to the other Then obviously in this time That they have to go They get to Mecca Then they have to look around Try to find him You know ask people and so on So then he says And this is what he says He says that You have to remember These 7 are going to be awliya of Allah So Allah could very easily have a miracle come about where they can go from one place to the other in an instance but we can clearly understand that you know a miracle could definitely happen but we don't need miracles in that sense anymore in the sense that they could easily go very fast between the two places now Sufyani will hear about the appearance of Mahdi so this Sufyani who's been just going around he will hear that Mahdi has come out he will send an army from Kufa An army, Mahdi, uh, 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 the Sufyani will send an army against the Mahdi in Medina Munawwara right? He will, uh, Makkah, he will, he will send, uh, sorry he's in Medina now right So he will send an army from Kufa They'll come to Medina and they will ravage it for three days They'll make it halal, as the, the, that's the wording used They'll consider it to be halal to do whatever they want, so lawful which is obviously wrong They will obviously be looking for the Mahdi To finish him off Because he, Sufyani knows that Mahdi is the biggest threat to him However When they will come out of Medina Munawwara then And they will be In the empty area The stony area outside Khusifa bi awalihim wa akhirihim They will all be sunk into the ground N- Nobody Of them Except one man To go and tell the Sufyani The bad news And another man To go and tell Mahdi the good news Only two people will survive Everybody else will be Sunk into the ground By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala When the Mahdi will hear about this He will say That this is the time for us to go now This is the time for us to Go out So he will go out And 
he will, you know, they will extract everybody from Medina. Right? Some of this will be a bit of a repeat because we're overlapping. Right? So he will, all of those who had been prisoners in Medina Munawwara of the family of uh, the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi and the other Hashimiyin, they will all be freed. So much so now that the whole of Hijaz, that's the western border of Arabia, will all be opened up for them. So that will all be now under the under the rule of Mahdi, meaning under his command. Now, from the Khurasan area and Mawara un Nahr, which is further north from there, a man will appear whose name will be Harith or Harrath. Harith means the protector, the one who looks after the guard. Harith. That that'll be his title. He will come out of that area, he will appear in that area. And in front of him, in his army, will be a man called Mansur. This is the famous Mansur. And these people, this Mansur and this army, they will be very good with the family of Rasulullah So they will cater for them. It's necessary for every believer to help them. So they will help. It's possible that this is the person called Hashimi that we're going to speak about afterwards. Or it could be somebody else. See, there is no 100% crystal clear account of this that we can just tell you like a story. There are a number of different narrations that have been told. And they have certain overlaps. So we have to try to put them together. This author has done his best to put them together. That's why some parts will seem a bit convoluted. Some, t- some parts will seem a bit maybe repetitive. But that's the best we can do because it's about some very detailed things about something that's going to happen in the future. And as I mentioned also, that not all of these ahadith are on a high level of authenticity. Some are, like that some of the main points are. But we've covered some of them already. The other parts are from maybe some weaker hadith or some narrations from Ali radiallahu and others. So we're not to say that in every piece of, in every one of these details that we have to believe it in 100%. This is giving us a general idea. I want to make that very clear. This is giving us a general idea. That this is what seems to be what's going to happen. Things could turn out slightly differently. But the main things are going to be there. There's going to be a Mahdi. There's going to be a Sufiani and things like that. Right. So don't take every word as though it's, uh, it's a, a gospel. You know, that, that's, that's it. You know, that's what it's going to be. Right. So I'm just making that very clear. Because the author here has compiled all the different hadith and narrations together. And some of them are authentic and some of them are not very authentic. <coughs> So now what will happen is, as I said, from that area, there will be a, an army that is going to be beginning. So Sufyani will have heard about this as well. So he will, he will have armies, small armies in that area. And there'll be many different small wars, many skirmishes between this group that I spoke about and this Sufyani's army. The group I spoke about of the Hashemi or the Harith. Right? They will be looking for the Mahdi. So they will be fighting with this army of uh, with these armies of Sufyani and number of different wars will take place one in Tunisia in Tunis another one in a place called Dulab or Rai and another one in Takhum al Darnikh I haven't been able to look uh, as to exactly where those areas are maybe uh, in the next one I'll check that out but this will go on for a very long time you know, this is in another area this will go on for a long time then they will until now they haven't given their pledge to anybody now they will become more of a formal army and they will decide to give bay'ah and a pledge to a man among them who's from the Banu Hashim. He'll be a Hashimi man. On his right hand, right palm, there will be a mole, a birthmark. That's the sign that he's going to be their Amir. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will really make his matter very easily. Once they've got this Amir, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will facilitate for them his, his way. He will be the half, of, half brother of Mahdi. He'll be, it's related, Allah knows best, but he will be half a, from his father, half a brother, half brother of Mahdi, or he might be his cousin. We don't know yet. It could be his cousin, it could be his half brother. But at that time, he's right in the east. He's not in the Middle East, he's in the east, right? He will come out with the people of Khurasan. And Taluqan. Taluqan, as far as I remember, 
is an area just outside Balkh. It's one of the suburbs of Balkh, if I'm correct, in Afghanistan today. Uh, Khurasan is that general area. Balkh is in Khurasan. Talukan is as well. And they will have small black flags with them. Small black banners will be with them. These are not the same as the banners of the Banu Abbas, the Abbasids. These will be the, the banners that they will have. They will be small. At their forefront will be a man from the Tamim. He will be of a middle, uh, of a not too high, not, not too tall, not too short, slightly yellowish complexion, thin, sparse beard. His name will be Shu'aib ibn Salih at Tamimi. Shu'aib ibn Salih, Shu'aib the son of Salih from the Tamim tribe. He will come out to these people, he would have come out to, the, to this other army in 5,000 men, with 5,000 men. So when the Harith would find out about him, he will put him in the front. He will put him in the front. Whatever comes in their way, they will take care of. So this will be a very formidable army. This will be the special army that is speaking about with the black flag, flags from Khurasan. And they will go towards Jerusalem and they'll just take care of everything on their way. So this is that famous army. The Mahdi is not with them yet. There's some narrations which seem to indicate Mahdi is with them, but the stronger opinion is that Mahdi is in, he's in Medina, Munawwara, he's in that area. These people will be coming to join up with him. This is his, brother, uh, his brothers with them or the, his cousin. It's related in a hadith of Tirmidhi from Abu Huraira radiallahu an, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ بِرَايَاتٍ سَوْدَاء أَقْبَلَتْ مِنْ خُرَاسَانٍ فَأْتُوهَا وَلَوْ حَبْوًا عَلَى الثَّلْجِ When you hear of the black flags that will be coming, that will be approaching from Khurasan, then go to them. Go to them even if you have to go on the snow on your knees. Go make sure you go, go, to, go and join with them even if you have to go on your knees because that's the only way you'll be, you'll be saved. It's related from Amir uh, al-Mu'mineen Ali radiallahu an karram allahu wajha that he was speaking about this as well that even if you are locked up in a box if you are locked up in a box break that lock somehow and the box if you have to and go and join with that army just showing extreme importance that that army is the one that you need to join in another version it says that because they will be the Khalifa of Allah Mahdi in them but obviously that means that his assistance will be in them. Allah's assistance will be with them because Mahdi is not going to be there. He's going to be in Medina, Munawwara. Or it could mean that it could be his brother or cousin. He's going to be in Makkah in those days, sorry. In Makkah, he's going to be in Makkah in those days. So now this army will come and it will finally meet with the army of Sufyani. See, until now it's been fighting with Sufyani's armies, but Sufyani hasn't been with them. It's been the remote armies that he has. Now... There will be a massive war, a big war between the two armies and Sufyani will be in that one as well. This will be in the land, uh, in, in an open land outside Istakhar. I'm assuming that's in Persia. So much so that the horses will be going around in blood up to their, up to their necks. So this will be a very violent one. This will be a very violent war. And then a very large army from Sijistan. Now Sijistan is in Iran. Uh, it's in northern Iran, Uzbekistan, that area. A very large army from there will come. On the, at the head of whom will be a man from the Banu Adi tribe that will come in assistance to this Muslim army. Well, Sufyan is supposed to be a Muslim as well. But in, unto this pious army, the black flags. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give assistance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them assistance and uh, they will overcome the other army. It's also possible that this other army may be a help for Sufyani, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give victory to the, Mus uh, to the pious army. That, that's definite. Then there will be another, uh, another incident in Madain, which is outside Baghdad. Then in Ray, which is by Tehran. So it looks like capitals, right? And then there will be a very intense one in a place called Aqarquqa. I haven't been able to figure out where that is. That will be such a severe one that only those people who've been able to escape or 
survive from there will be able to tell its story then this army with the black flags will continue to come until they come and they will find a place to camp by a lake or water some type of water so that's in the hadith it just mentions in general they'll come upon some water a lake a river or something and they'll camp there it is possible that this is the euphrates sorry this is the dajla the tigris river which is outside baghdad in baghdad uh, or in in iraq so when this army is there now remember sufyani had a big army in kufa sufyani is going to have a big army in kufa if you remember he sent one to medina from there he's going to have another army there the people of sufyani sorry the people of sufyani his companions there his people they will hear that this army of the black flags would have been camped out by most likely the river tigris so they will run away from Kufa because they know that that's going to be next so they'll run away from Kufa so this army will then come to Kufa and they will free all of the prisons that had been taken until now because remember in Kufa they had be, they'd taken all the prisoners Sufyani's army had taken the prisoners there the Banu Hashim now it looks like things are going against Sufyani but he doesn't stop there even the fact that his army was sunk into the ground did not perturb him did not change him in any way whatsoever he just keeps going on because remember he's a big munafiq he's outwardly he's a muslim but he's a big munafiq inside and slowly slowly he'll do something else as well so now what will happen is after this kufa incident there will be a group a group of people will come out of the outskirts of kufa they'll be called asab they won't have any they won't have any weapons with them just a small amount of weaponry some of them will be of the people of basra with them who had left and abandoned the sufyani so these will be people who have abandoned sufyani and they will have some of the prisoners with them so this army will take will release the prisoners from them as well then these people with the black flag they will send their pledge of allegiance to mahdi and the mahdi will come from hijaz so the Mahdi will come from Arabia. These people have already sent forth the pledge that we pledge allegiance to you. Right? We're coming to support you. So Mahdi will start to come from Hijaz. Sufyani from Kufa. After he's heard about, remember he heard about his army being sunk into the ground, the one he had sent there. All of these things are happening parallel. It's just I'm having to tell you different parts of it. But while Mahdi was dealing with this army, that Sufyani had sent and then it was sunk into the ground this other army was coming with the black flags from there and then there were skirmishes going on on that side as well and then Sufyani's uh, big army they'll all be going towards Damascus Sufyani was in Kufa so now he's running towards he's trying to hurry towards, Kufa, uh, towards uh, Damascus so is Mahdi and so is uh, this other army of the black flags Wallahu alam maybe for the coming of Isa alayhi salam, I'm not sure yet. But the Sakhari will get there first. Who is Sakhari? Sakhar, Sakhar means a big stone, a boulder. That is the other name for Sufyani. And there's a reason for that which you'll find out later. Why he's called Sakhari. So in some narrations it talks about him as the Sakhari. But he's the same person as the Sufyani. Sufyani will get there first. It's his hometown. So he will quickly formulate another army against the Mahdi who's coming, who's coming to Sham. But this army will get there fast to the land of the Hijaz. And they will join with Mahdi. They'll give him the bay'ah. And then they'll come with Mahdi to Sham. So they've switched sides. In some narrations it says, you know that army that was sunk into the ground? In some narrations it says that they will be sent from Sham, from Syria. But in other versions it says they'll be sent from Iraq. So Sham and Iraq are two different areas. So how is that possible? So he says, no, that, that's simple. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani has, has reconciled this. That although they may be sent from Iraq, because that's where the army will be camped, they're originally from Damascus. They're originally from Syria. So they are Shamis. So he's saying the Shami army or a Kufa uh, or army from Iraq, it means the same thing. There's also another narration, it says that this second army that is sent, 
They don't join with Mahdi just like that. There is a fight with Mahdi first. And Mahdi at that time only has about the 313 people with him. The large army is coming afterwards. But right now Mahdi has a small army with him. But that time they will hear a sound from the heavens. This army of Mahdi, the small amount of group, the small group that he has with them, he will, they will hear a sound from the heavens saying, Allah inna awliya Allah ashabu fulan ya'ni al-Mahdi. That know that the friends of Allah, the awliya of Allah, are the companions of Mahdi. So that will reinvigorate them and it will reinforce them and it will strengthen them. So this will be a turn of fate on Sufyani. And this army that Sufyani would have sent, and it could be another army, right? Because you know he could have sent more armies. None of them will remain. Every one of them will be killed except those who ran away, fugitives or the displaced ones. Otherwise, all of them will be killed. They'll come back to Sufyani, the few that have escaped, and they will tell him about it. So we've got one narration that tells us that this army that goes to against Mahdi will become Mahdi's and they will turn around against Sufyani and the other narration tells us what? that there will be a fight among them and most of them will be killed so the author says that the possibility is that maybe it's a very large army some of them turned around and con- converted stayed with Mahdi the other f- who fought most of them were killed except the few so that's a possibility. As I said, this is about telling events in the future. Only Allah knows best exactly the details, but this is what we understand. This is maybe the way to reconcile them. And it also, you know, it, it, you know, we spoke earlier about all of Hijaz will come under Mahdi. So what, what's he doing with only 313 people? So that's why it's possible that this has happened before he takes over the whole of Hijaz. Because once he takes over Hijaz, he's going to have a very large army along with then the other one that comes. So again, this is most likely that it's happened earlier, before he takes over all Hijaz. This is when he's just come out of Mecca or Medina. And this is when that's happening. So Allah knows best. Then Sufyani will start to cause even more problems in the world. Open, blatant. Because until now he at least showed himself to be a believer. So he was causing problems not in a very overt, open way. But he will now express his kufr. He will express his disbelief now. So much so that he will go around with a woman and have intercourse, fornicate in the masjid in Damascus over a gathering of uh, wine and intoxicants. So he'll be open kafir after that and he will allow the, the, the wine to flow in the masjid and he will fornicate. So much so that he'll have all of these women around him. You can just imagine this, you know, the, the, he'll have all of these women around him and one of them will come and sit on his thigh. And she will sit on it and he will be in the mihrab. He will be sitting in the mihrab and this woman will come and sit on him. And a man, one of the Muslimin, who's got some iman in his heart, he will stand up and he will say, وَيْحَكُمْ أَكَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ Woe be to you, have you disbelieved after your iman? This is completely unlawful what are you doing so he will get up and he will um, Sufyani will get up and kill him kill that man and he will also kill anybody else that supports him so you can see that this guy's lost it and at that time an announcement will be made from the heavens ayyuhan nas inna Allah qad qata'a ankum al jabbarin wal munafiqeen wa ashia'ahum we spoke about this as one of the signs of the coming of Mahdi again that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has now, has now taken care of the tyrants, the munafiqeen, and anybody like them. وَوَلَّاكُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And he has put over you the best of the ummah of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. فَأَلْحَكُوا بِمَكَّةِ Go and go to Makkah مكرمة. فَإِنَّهُ الْمَهْدِي Because he is the Mahdi and his name is Ahmad ibn Abdullah. So this is when that announcement will take place. Remember we mentioned that two or three times there will be an announcement made from the heavens when people will know. And it will be a clear thing for everybody. This will be one of them. So the Mahdi will go with his army until they get to a place called Wadi Al-Qura, which is short distance from Medina Munawwara, in the direction of Sham. So it's north of Medina Munawwara, a distance. He'll go there in great... He'll go there... 
great ease and comfort and that is where he will meet up with the army of his cousin with the black flags that army will be with 12,000 or he will, he will join with him 12,000 people and he'll say to him oh my cousin I am more rightful his cousin the, the, the one who's just come from Khurasan he'll say oh my cousin I'm more rightful of this matter than you are I've got more rights over it because I'm from the children of Hassan and I'm the Mahdi so the true Mahdi will say to him no I am the Mahdi so the Hassani will say have you got a sign if you've got a sign then that's fine I'll pledge allegiance to you so Mahdi alayhi salam remember this is another sign that we spoke about before he will indicate he will make a gesture to one of the birds and it will fall in his hand he will plant just a normal stick into the ground a dry stick and it will become it will become fresh and green and it will begin to sprout so the Hassani the, his cousin will say oh my cousin it's yours and he will follow him so obviously there is some discussion about why that would happen but what this also means is that the Mahdi is from the children you know, there was a discussion in the beginning is, that, is he from the family of Hassan radiallahu anh, or Hussein radiallahu anh? he's definitely from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa but is he Hassani or Husseini right so this kind of indicates that he'll be Husseini because his cousin is from Hassani and that's the argument at that time Allah knows best why uh, the question is that why is his cousin say in the beginning that it should you know why did he even ask kind of that it might be mine well, maybe because his grandfather Hassan was Khalifa before he gave it over to Muawiyah, so he felt that he was more rightful of it. And so Allah knows best why, why that happened, but that, that will be cleared up anyway. So, inshallah, we'll carry on from here next time. Now that this army has got together, Sufyan is causing all of this problem on that side. This army has just got together outside Medina Munawwara, and inshallah, we'll carry on. Uh, the point of a lecture is to encourage people to act, to get further, an inspiration, an encouragement, persuasion. The next step is to actually start learning seriously, to read books, to take on a subject of Islam and to understand all the subjects of Islam, at least at their basic level, so that we can become more aware of what our deen wants from us. Uh, and that's why we started uh, Rayyan courses, so that uh, you can actually take organized lectures uh, on demand whenever you have free time, especially, for example, the Islamic Essentials uh, course that we have on there, the Islamic Essentials Certificate, which you take 20 short modules. And at the end of that, inshallah, you will have gotten the, the basics of uh, most of the most important topics in Islam, and you'll feel a lot more confident. You don't have to leave lectures behind. You can continue to, leave, uh, you know, to listen to lectures, but you need to have this more sustained study as well. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, the point of a lecture is to encourage people to act, to get further, an inspiration, an encouragement, persuasion. The next step is to actually start learning seriously, to read books, to take on a subject of Islam and to understand all the subjects of Islam, at least at their basic level, so that we can become more aware of what our deen wants from us. Uh, and that's why we started uh, Rayyan courses, so that uh, you can actually take organized lectures uh, on demand whenever you have free time, especially for example the Islamic Essentials uh, course that we have on there, the Islamic Essentials Certificate, which you take 20 short modules and at the end of that inshallah you will have gotten the, the basics of uh, most of the most important topics in Islam and you'll feel a lot more confident. You don't have to leave lectures behind, you can continue to, leave, uh, you know, to listen to lectures, but you need to have this more sustained study as well. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.